Hey everyone, Graham from Loudwire here at Rock in the Range, and I am with Mr. Matt Tuck of Bullet for my Valentine. Thank you so much for joining me, no man. No worries, my friend. Appreciate no worries. Your time. Uh, so this is Wikipedia Fact or Fiction. I went on your Wikipedia pages today. Okay. Pulled out some stuff that may or may not be true. You can say yes or no, fact or fiction, and elaborate if you so choose. All right, sounds good. So, first of all, Matthew Tuck, born in Bridgend, South Wales. True. Okay, they do get that wrong sometimes. Yep, that's where I'm from. There you go. Uh, if you could answer this about Padge, perhaps. Uh, it said he was about 17 when he got his first guitar. He couldn't even tune the guitar for about a month. And the first song he learned was Polly by Nirvana. Yeah, that's definitely true. That's all 100% true. Yeah. Okay. I don't think, well, the age is a little bit inaccurate. But the rest Not of 17? It is, yeah. No, he's around, he's around 15. 15, okay. Yeah, I so remember. That's, uh, there's some fiction, yeah, there, so that's why some we fiction, do it. But, yeah. All right. So when, you got, when did you get your first guitar? Uh, I got my first guitar when I was 14. 14. Bought, bought it myself, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, do you remember the first song you learned on it? I think the first song that I could play front to back it's probably like smells like Teen Spirit. That's that's like the definitive yeah, for everybody. Yeah, it's good. Right? You know those Nirvana tracks. They're great for you know simplicity. Absolutely. You know? So yeah, hundred percent. All right. Uh, Bullet for my Valentine formed while studying music at Bridge End College, and you started by playing Nirvana and Metallica cover songs. Yeah, that's true, man. That's very true. Yeah. That's, so that's uh, how we did it. Would you guys do gigs playing Nirvana and Metallica, or was that just kind of a warm up for you guys? No, we did like kind of local pub gigs, just um, you know, like a local band entertainment on a Friday, Saturday night. Yeah. Just go and play like the classic cover songs that we know people wanted to hear, you know. Yeah. Just get the ever... experience of just playing live in front of a crowd, you know. Yeah. Any big crowds ever, or like a good, oh, a decent no. pub crowd at least? Or... No, maybe like 20, 30 people tops 20... every time, you know. All right. Well. And they were mainly hammer drunk, so. Well, if they're drunk enough, sometimes that can make for a good crowd. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. We enjoyed it. Awesome. Uh, it says that your songwriting is personally highly influenced by Bruce Springsteen, Bob Seger, and Bob Dylan. Um, my songwriting isn't influenced by those guys, but I am okay. a big fan of those guys and admire how they write songs and the art of songwriting, you know? Okay, so influence would be the, the incorrect Influence is the word. wrong word, but I'm a massive fan of those guys. I'm yeah. a huge Bob Dylan fan myself. Excellent. Man. Yes. Okay, so we'll, we'll say that's fiction. Uh, it said that the name change from Jeff Killed John to Bullet For My Valentine mm -hmm. uh, was because of financial difficulties. Complete fiction. Yeah, yeah, that didn't sound right I don't to even me. Know what like that means. Fi financial <laughs> difficulties for like a small band yeah, at the, the time, you know. Just a, a covers why, band that wasn't Why signed. would that make you change your name? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> okay, it's not true, guys. So it was the name changed just because of your stylistic shift yeah, at the time. I yeah, I mean the Jeff Gold John thing was something we came up with when we were like 15 years old because of a stupid incident at school. Um, Did a guy named Jeff fight a guy named John? Kind of. It's a little bit X-rated, so I better oh, say Jesus. on here. Oh, Jesus. Um, well, yeah, this we is just, a kid's show, so don't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, June 2007, you suffered from laryngitis and had an emergency tonsillectomy. And because of this, Bullet for My Valentine were forced to cancel shows supporting Metallica. Mm. True. Have you supported them since? Um, not as far as being on tour with them, but we've done Fe many festivals, festivals and stuff. Oh, yeah. my God. So we, that we was managed supposed to do to some shows with them prior to that, though. So th that must have been a, a heartbreaker, right? Yeah. That was a big one. That, that bummed me out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that wasn't good. That wasn't good. And it was at Wembley Stadium as well in, uh, in London, you know? So 90,000 people in London support Metallica and couldn't do it. So unfortunately, it's true. Okay, so we need Metallica. Metallica, you need to take Bullet on at least a few on, shows. Man. Please, do it. this man's been through enough. It's true. <laughs> uh, scream, aim, fire. Uh, the lyrics over the top several times is a reference to World War One trench warfare. Basically, yeah. That's true. Yeah, the whole song is about kind of warfare, and it's a bit more of a theatrical song that I kind of got my head into. Yeah. You know. So how did you get into that? Were you watching a lot of History Channel, or reading a lot of historical texts? Um, not really. I just wanted to kind of, like I said, take on a bit more of a fictional role as a songwriter you know the poison was very okay. kind of personal and just weird lyrically and, and this one I just kind of wanted to kind of just experiment more with lyrical content you know it's kind of it was our second record and I was still kind of what I feel as now looking back very early to songwriting really you know what I mean so I think it was just more kind of having fun with the song and writing about a topic we felt was fitting to the kind of thrashy soundtracks we were writing you know 
Uh, it says on Fever, Bullet For My Valentine rewrote the lyrics and melodies uh, for many of the songs up to five times. I say five is an exaggeration. I think three is more accurate. Okay, so but there was multiple versions and and writing sessions on multiple songs. Yeah. So was this kind of a while you were recording or, or during the writing process that you just kept on? Uh, mainly the recording process, you okay. know, because until you start putting it down for real with a producer, things can evolve and take shape. And that was the first time we'd worked with a guy called Don Gilmore. Okay. And he was a bit of a ball breaker when it came to lyrics and stuff, which I'd mm. never had before. So he was just kind of pushing me and pushing me to rewrite and rewrite until he, we both thought it was up to the standard it needed to be, you know? So. so how did that kind of pressure shape the way that the record came out in the studio? Because that's a tough thumb to be to be put under, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was nice at the time. We didn't like it, you know, because we were butting heads and getting into fights. And, yeah. you know, I'd had all the success previously with Bullet without anyone's help. Yeah. You know, so I was Mr. Know-it-all, obviously, you know, and... But, um, you know, I learned a lot from that guy and, you know, the button of the heads and the rewriting and stuff ultimately made me a better songwriter, made the album stronger. And it was something that I look on very fondly now, you know. Uh, it says that you recorded most of the guitar and bass parts on Temper Temper. Uh, I record all the guitar parts and all the bass parts for every album. Every album? I, every album. I don't album. think it says that on Wikipedia. So well, I don't get the credit. I know. You don't get the credit. That's fine. Uh, so why, why record the bass parts yourself? Uh, because of the way I write the guitar parts to get someone else to play the bass part is just kind of unnecessary okay. and it's tighter if the same right hand is playing the same rhythms it sure. just comes down to a speed and efficiency in the studio kind of thing you know? uh, last one for you it says Bullet For My Valentine almost recorded an album with Pantera producer Terry Date um, I won't say we almost scored an album with him, but when we were looking for producers to do certain records, we had meetings with Terry. Oh wow! Um, okay. Because he was in the in the the go-to guy list that we wanted to work with, you know. Of course. So, uh, as he so would yeah. Be with so we met him a couple of times. Great guy. Uh, for whatever reason, we decided not to do it in the end. But you know, maybe someday in the future. Yeah, who knows? You know, depends where our heads at recording and what we where we want to take the band musically. You know. Thank you so much, man, for giving cool, me man. your time, Matt. Pull it from my Valentine, everybody. Yeah.